What's going on guys? Big BP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna to be going full force, full detail. It's gonna be a long one on Time Crisis. All right guys, so I just saw my last video, the first video really showing off the cabinet. We just did, I had to do it in a way that it was uh, basically a basic because I was talking too much and I looked at the timestamp on the camera and it was just, there was time going. I was already 20 minutes in just talking about the software and all that. So this now is part two. I'm gonna just take this video to go full fledged. We're gonna be talking about the customer on this. We're gonna be talking about the build, all the stuff, the collaborations, the everything on this one. So this will be the last video for Time Crisis before it goes out. Vic BP, Game Base Arcades, I'm, <laughs> I'm everywhere. <laughs> Okay, so now I know you guys are dying to know this is probably the main thing. People want to know, hey Vic, what's in this? What's running in it? How many games and all that? Before we go into that, let me just talk about the customer itself because that's what's going to segue into the actual parts that are involved. So this is going out to Sean out in Atlanta. Sean messaged me on Instagram and he goes, Vic, I have all the parts for a Pew Pew build cabinet. It's been sitting in my garage for a year, Vic. Please, can you build a cabinet for me? And I said, you have all the parts? He goes, yes, I have the PC, I have the graphics card, I have the Pew Pew devices, I even have the drive that has all the games on it. I just need somebody to build a cabinet. The craziest thing about the story is that it's been in his garage for a year. And I'm like, oh my God, it's been in your garage for a year and you haven't played with it? He goes, no Vic, please build this cabinet for me and then I'll pay for shipping, freighting it out to me, please help me. So I said, okay, I've never seen that before. So. He actually sent me the link to Game of Solutions cabinet. He's like, Vic, I want this cabinet. And I was like, bro, like you could you could buy it and you could build it. Like, you know, he's like, Vic, I want you to build it. So once he said it to me, I was like, okay, I gotta obviously take on the challenge. And I, I, I appreciate the thought of somebody saying, I want Vic to build this cabinet. So again, shout out to Sean. This is going out to Atlanta. So I'm gonna be creating it. I'm gonna be putting out a pallet, all that. I'm super excited. As far as the stuff inside of it, and this is like, I know the guy and it's like a really awesome collaboration. It was an accidental collaboration. This is running a buddy of mine. I don't want to really say a buddy of mine because we're not really friends. We've met on the Facebook group and he's actually up and coming, I'll be honest. This is running Joel Retro Lizards Arcade 182 Pew Pew Games Strictly Hard Drive on this. So in an accidental collaboration, Big VP, Retro Lizard Custom Arcades. This is his 182 Pew Pew only external hard drive build on this. And again, it's an accidental collaboration. I definitely give big, I'm gonna be talking about his drive now and in future videos because this drive is set. Again, his name is Joel, Retro Lizard Custom Arcades. I'll be putting the link down below because honestly, I would say like a good 50%, it's really based on the games and stuff. And that's gotta go out to him. I'm not gonna take any credit on it. So this is running Retro Lizards Custom Arcade Pew Pew hard drive in this. Now again, you can take a look at his videos. He's got more stuff. Awesome dude, he's just like me. We, he's out in New York, I believe he's in Buffalo. So he is far away from me. So he's not really a competitor of mine, but it's definitely awesome that accidentally we collaborated. I do see him on the Facebook groups. We have our own personal group, and then all, obviously he's also on the Arcade 1UP group. And um, I keep posting a lot because I'm just so pleased with this cabinet, and I'm so pleased with the, the drive itself. I've been actually making a lot of live videos on Facebook for him. Not really for him, for myself, but it's been a lot of like, you gotta check out Joel Retro Lizard's hard drive on it. So again, this right now is running Retro Lizard's 182 Pew Pew hard drive, I said it like five times. <laughs> no, I'm not getting paid by Joel. No, this is not sponsored by Joel. It is just a very big coincidence that I guess we collaborated accidentally on this one. Now, the big question is, Vic, what is this running? Again, Sean messaged me, he had everything sitting in his garage for a year, which is the craziest thing of this whole situation. He said, Vic, I have everything. I have the Dell Optiplex. I got the Pew Pew from Ray. I'm gonna get the exact company. I believe it was RPEG Electronics, which is another dude that I have to give a big shout out to when I do talk about the devices itself. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's, it's definitely awesome to have 
all these people come in and join in on this build accidentally. That's that's the funny part of it. So Sean does have in this a Dell Optiplex. I believe it's a 7020 or a 7010. It is not a small form factor PC. Um, I'm going to be discussing in another video, like again, my pros and cons. Me personally, the Dell Optiplexes are good because they're you know they're cheap. I'm going to be honest, they're cheap. If you do find it now, though, adding graphics card in this world, the graphics card stage is insane. They're, they, they're cheap, they get the job done. I'm gonna definitely do some gameplay video on this video. You're gonna see some of the cons to it that I believe is related to the PC, or it may actually be related to the hard drive. So again, this isn't sponsored by anybody. I'm gonna give you my full honest review on this, on Joel's drive, on the PC, everything about it. Honestly, it's 95% positive with 5% of a negative kind of notice I've noticed. Um, so again, this is running a Dell Optiplex. He does have a 1030, GTX 1030 on it. It's an i5, 8 gigs of RAM on this build. Again, the uh, hard drive that Joel does give you, it's a, I believe it's like a 250 or, or 500 gig external hard drive. I'm gonna be going closer in depth with that because I did make a suggestion to Joel on his hard drive and all that. So he does have that. Uh, the total file though is about 260 gigs um, of games, if you think of it like that. Uh, and the biggest thing was the Pew Pew devices. This is running gun for IR, jolts. These are jolt guns. Um, I mean, again, I, I, I'm in the RK world. The light Pew, I, I could say, it, the light gun kind of like world now, it's evolving so fast. I'm used to my aim tracks. Now you got gun for IR, you have Sindin, and now you have another one that's called AE. There's so much technology going on, especially with these light guns. Um, I, I'm a big AimTrack fan, but AimTrack was original. I love these gun for IRs. I'm gonna be going in depth on this again with this video. These gun for IRs are, they're, they're a thing of beauty, especially with the recoil. Big deal. It's a game changer with the recoil. So again, this is running gun for IR jolts powered recoil and we do have also the pedal on this so again there's gonna be a lot of names they're gonna be shouting out a bunch of comp companies and all that but that's the basics of it dell optiplex i5 8 gigs of ram 1030 on it we got joel's drive on it and we have gun for ir on this build so again as you can see there's a lot going on in the video just i'm pretty sure i'm like seven minutes alone just on describing the system itself joel is running on this launch box i'm a big hyperspin freak Launchbox, I've tried it. I'm still trying to learn it. Um, but honestly, the Launchbox layout for this specific build, in my experience, it's a thing of beauty. You could go ahead and get the big box license, but I'll be brutally honest, this Launchbox setup, it's actually very easy, user-friendly, especially in this scenario. So again, this is running Launchbox, 182 games. I think we're at actually 185. Joel messaged me, he added two more games, so that's what's also pretty cool with Retro Lizard. He will help walk you through the process of calibrating. He does have video on the drive too, so I did follow the videos. It took me about, I would say, an hour to get everything situated and up and running. Um, I was able to do it because I'm familiar with the software, but he does have videos and he will also team viewer in to help you get acquainted and adjusted and set and all that. He also, I guess, will team viewer in to add a couple of games. Uh, also, keep in mind, again, Sean had this drive sitting in his garage for a year. Uh, and once I discovered, Sean told me, you know, Vic, it's Retro Lizard's drive. I hit up Joel. Joel hit me back. He goes, Vic, send me the drive. You have to send it to me because it's been a big update and a big upgrade, I guess you could say. Send it out to Joel. He didn't charge anything. Send it back to me, all upgraded and up to date and all that. And obviously, from when I built it and when I posted the short, to now, we probably added about three games to it, um, and I've been kind of playing around with making sure that the you know the computer turns on and, and everything is set and all that for Sean. So again, just to give you a quick rundown, I'm running right now Time Crisis 1. I have the music, the, the sound muted and all that, but basically I have everything set to one button press. It's just like my arcade builds. You can see I'm able to go into LaunchBox. I could use the Pew Pew device to go ahead and click through games Basically, I should say consoles. So I could go to model two. I could run the house of the dead if I want. I'll press enter and basically the system will boot up and go. Um, as you can see there. So it's 
it's definitely cool. It's definitely a, a game changer. Again, that's why I like Launchbox in this specific build. I could see the systems, and as you can see, I could see about, I would say, a good 12 games on the actual home screen. So if I real quick go to Arcade, I have just the way I have it set up with the logos, 3, 6, 9, 12. So you could see 12 games just like that. Instead of like Big Box showing you one game and then you have to go down and up, this to me is pretty, pretty easy. Again, I'm pretty sure Joel wants people to get the Big Box build. But as you can see, to help you guys out, you don't have to spend the extra money for the license. It does work pretty well based off of just LaunchBox. I'm going to be talking about my custom button layout on this, and it's a very big deal. Again, it's my idea, I guess you could say. Um, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. <laughs> now, since we're on the subject with light guns and all that, again, I'm so used to aim tracks. I've done many aim track builds. Aim track, though, has a very big bar, a light bar. That you need to attach to the cabinet and the biggest thing so far when i've been posting videos on this build people go vic where's the bar don't you need infrared lights yes you do and again because of rpeg this is going out to raymond raymond is the owner the creator of rpeg electronics and i'll put the link down below where you could get he basically will send you he'll sell you the devices if you want one you want two of them the infrared lights if you do buy the pedal two you could buy that too he has everything but I did this build very specifically and I, I took about, I would say a good day or two just to make sure that you could not see the infrared lights. I'm gonna bring you closer cause you can't see it. I've seen other people again on the Facebook groups on, on, you know, on Facebook group where you see people that have this exact cabinet, but they kind of, I don't wanna say the word butchered it, but they do kind of modify it to make the infrareds work. Biggest thing that I've seen one person do is that they actually cut the bezel out. They cut the bezel out. Um, Retro Lizard just made an exact cabinet like this for somebody in Florida, which me and him, we've been talking about freight and how we could you know, get these things shipped out. Um, that customer used wireless infrared lights, which I think are battery powered. It's basically a, a, a puck. Um, Retro Lizard had to put it actually on the bezel. So you do have the bezel and then you have four blocks. This, the way Raymond has this set up, and luckily Sean bought the right stuff, it is beautiful. I'm going to take you closer because I'm talking about it, but you really can't even see the infrareds on it. I think it's so cool how I did it. So, again, gun for IR, you do need infrareds for these. Sindens, they do have the white border. I haven't touched Sinden, so I'm not going to badmouth Sinden, but biggest thing is, if you can see kind of carefully, there's infrareds here, here, here and here again just so the biggest thing was to make sure it has to be clean just looking at it if i didn't point to it you might not have noticed it but you got three there you got another three there that blend in perfectly with the tv bezel and then you have three at the bottom so again raymond rpeg electronics gives you these infrareds he also does have um wires usb power going to these and it's just it's very clean i'll take you to the back i'll show you what it looks like but basically as you can see you could barely see the infrareds on it it's it's, it's a thing of beauty so as you can see how i did the infrared sensors you do need them i'm not going to go into this whole debate about which light gun is better and this company's better i'm not i'm not into that because now the facebook groups are getting too toxic with all that i have not played with anything besides an aim track and now the gun for IRs. I haven't touched Sindens and I have not touched AEs. So if you ask me, Vic, which one is better, I'll be brutally honest, I am loving, not even BSing it, I'm not getting paid to say this, but I am loving the gun for IR. This right here, I did not have to cal calibrate it. I didn't have to calibrate it. it. Because of the four sensors, it just knows where you are. I had no, it, it didn't need calibration. Aim tracks, you need to shoot the corners and all that. This, it's just, it's, it, it was, anybody could use it now. So if you're shorter than me, longer than me, taller than me, this basically will adapt to you, honestly, because of the four sensors on it. Um, so again, these are running gun for IRs. I definitely love these jolts. Uh, again, I'm gonna talk about, you know, what the customer did. Definitely loving these jolts, and honestly, you do need the recoil on it. What's cool about this, and I even asked Raymond if that was a purposeful thing, I'm not looking at the screen right now, so the recoil is not active, but the second I point to the screen, it's active. 
So it's kind of cool. It's a pretty, I don't know if that's supposed to be a feature, but definitely something that I did notice. Now, a little bit of plus and minus for Sean. Sean, like I said, he had this in his garage. The craziest thing is that he bought the power adapter for the recoil for one gun. He did not buy it for the second gun. So I basically wire loomed it. The wire loom you could open up, but this one, no matter what switch position you're in, it doesn't have the recoil on it. You can always buy it. It's nothing major, but you do need a, a big power supply to power these. So this does have the power supply on it for player one. Sean is a tech kind of guy, so it's very easy. Even if you weren't, it's very easy to just plug in the adapter, run the wire. It's not that difficult, but Sean knows that I suggested, hey, you should get player two to recoil. Again, I can't say enough about gunfire. You look up Raymond, he'll hook you up. He apparently makes these so custom. This really is a PlayStation 1 or a PlayStation 2 Pew Pew device. But I even mentioned to him, like, hey, can we get Gunfire in this? And he said it, it's doable. So shout out to Raymond on the whole custom stuff on it. But again, as far as the devices, I am loving the gun for IR. So now today's December 7th, things might change, prices might change, but I hit up Raymond and I hit up Joel, and I'm not the type to ask for discounts. I don't do that, especially them. They're like me, independent people that, you know, they're gonna charge X amount, that's what you get. For me to ask for a discount, it's kind of an insult because I wouldn't want to be asked a discount. I hit up Raymond, I said, Raymond, dude, how much are you charging for these devices? He said, Vic, honestly, getting just the Pew Pew itself, again, it's a PlayStation 2 Pew Pew device, I believe. Um, he's looking at $600 per gun. It's a plus and a minus. Uh, again, this is where people are gonna ask me, Vic, how much is this cabinet? And I'm gonna say, listen, this exact cabinet you see here is X amount. Some people might go to my video and just exit, like, whoa, you're, this is too crazy. Right now, with the way the industry is and all that, that is what Raymond said. It is 600 per gun. I said to him, I said, Ray, per gun? He goes, yes, Vic, per gun. So I said, Sean has two guns. I keep using the word gun, whatever. Sean has two of them. He goes, yeah, Vic, do the math. I said, oh, I didn't even ask about the pedal. He does the pedal too. I believe it's an extra charge for the pedal. I believe though, with the six, you do also get the infrareds and all that. So I'm gonna take you in the back of the cabinet to show you what the wiring looks like. All these TVs now have a USB port on the actual TV. So these infrareds are actually powered via the USB on the TV. So it's pretty cool. You don't have to waste an actual power outlet for the USB. This right now, this specific setup is connected to the USB device on the actual TV. So it is a little bit of a power saver or an outlet saver if you think about it like that. So that right now we're talking about the devices now. The devices, the guns are set. Now I want to talk about the drive. We're going to be talking about Retro Lizards Custom Arcade Pew Pew Drive. First thing, I mean again, there's a couple of factors to it and I always mention in my videos, I say, listen, you get what you pay for. This right now, the thing I'm going to mention, it's not a deal breaker. It's something that it's either the drive or it's the actual PC. 182 games as of this date. 182 games, possibly 184 because we added two or three games, a PC game. Um, out of those, I probably would say about six or seven games from my experience are not playable. What do I mean by not playable? You could either hear lag, graphical issues. Um, again, I can't pinpoint it exactly. I can't tell if it's the actual PC itself. Again, i5, 8 gigs of RAM, 1030 Dell Optiplex. So again, Dell Optiplex is our older generation hardware. Or, I mentioned to Joel, and again, if you do see this video and you do hit up Joel for a drive, just mention my name, just be like, hey, look, I looked at VicVP, I watched VicVP Game Case Arcade's video. Just so that you know, I know I, he knows that you guys came from me. Um, just mention it. He's not giving any discounts. I'm not as for that. Just mention it. Same thing when you get like if you order from Gaming Solutions, it helps me out because then these companies will mention message me and say, hey, somebody came from you. You know, it's just a good circle around. So if you can, just mention that I basically sent you. Um, I did mention to Joel. I suggest you get an external hard drive from a reputable company. 
He is running, um, I think I have the box somewhere. He's using like a, again, it's not to knock him. He's using a Chinese brand, like hard drive. I'm not gonna use the word cheap because I don't know what he pays for it. I'm trying to see if I have the box for it. I got it. So he's using this as the hard drive and e get 320 gigs, um, external hard drive. Me personally, this is just me personally. And I've experienced it on two other builds that I've done. I'm a big fan of like Seagate Western Digital. Um, I had one customer he bought, um, I basically sent him a couple of files uh, and he sent me like a Chinese brand one terabyte drive like this. And a file that was like 200 gigs should take about like, I don't know, an hour max. It took like four days. And I messaged the guy, I said, dude, this is because of the drive. Like your drive is, it's a cheap brand drive. It takes, it's not the same speeds as a Seagate or a Western Digital. So it works. This right now, this build right here is using this. It's using this. Out of the 320 gigs, you really only have about, I would say, 290 gigs open for use. I believe uh, Joel's drive is using 264 gigs or 280 gigs. Um, on this Dell Optiplex, it was a, I think he had a 512 gigabyte SSD. Um, and sadly, there wasn't enough space to put this drive to the SSD. I was short 40 gigs. I really wanted to remove this drive. Again, it's not to knock Joel, it's not to knock Retro Lizard. My suggestion to you is just message Joel and say, hey, I saw Vic VP's video. Can you upgrade the hard drive? I already spoke to Joel. He will give you the option if you're like me. I like my Seagates, I like my Western Digitals. You would just have to pay the difference on it. So just mention to him, hey, can I get the upgraded hard drive? That's really the only thing, the only criticism I could say about his drive. Again, other thing to note is that you do need a good PC. You can't use like integrated graphics. This is running like PlayStation 2. We do have even Xbox. He's got an Xbox game on it, Xbox One, like the original Xbox. And we got Windows PC games on it. And as I was playing it, I even had a buddy of mine playing this, uh, Joshua. We were playing it and then we noticed some slowdown. I can't pinpoint it, I can't. I, Cause I don't have another build, I don't have another set. I can't pinpoint whether it's the PC that's slowing us down or if it's the drive. Again, I'm gonna do a whole video. This is gonna be a long video. I'm gonna go in depth and we're gonna play a couple of games and all that. But as far as the drive, I can't compliment it enough. It is a beautiful setup. I mean, to me, Joel has every, Retro Lizard has every Pew Pew game there possibly could be that uses the devices. I mean, you wanna talk about like arcade, um, somebody mentioned, he was like, does it have chiller? Yeah, he's got, if you go into arcade, main arcade, and I'm gonna show you what I did with the button layouts, he does have chiller on this. I mean, to me, this drive is set. You could do it for cheaper, but he's got it just set. It's, it's in a beautiful way that it's, it's just set. I can't compliment enough. He's got arcade, you got NES, so I was playing Duck Hunt on this. That was the best thing about it. You got the Wii. Genesis, Model 2, even the Mazda system, PlayStation 1, 2, Techno Parrot, so this does run Rambo, this does run Transformers, Windows PC, I mean, to me, Joel knocked it out of the park with this one. Retro Lizard knocked it out. This has every Pew Pew game known to man. <laughs> so now real quick, I'll talk about my specific button layout now. So I am running a, an encoder, one of those Dragon Rise encoders. I had a bunch lying around. I'm running the Dragon Rise encoder, and basically, as I was playing it, as I was building the system, I figured out and I narrowed it down. Again, you know me, I'm a big fan of no keyboard, no mouse. I want this thing to boot. You should just go right into gaming. You shouldn't have to hold a mouse and a keyboard. I don't like that. So basically, keeping the front end as launch box, as you can see, I have my console set up and I have my games here. All I have here is player one, coin start. Player two, coin start, right? Down the middle, I have escape key, which is exit, up, down, and then enter, which is action and all that. So that's all you really need. I secretly also have player one, coin and start as left and right. Those are arrow keys. So as you can see, when I was doing it for chiller, if, I, if I'm in arcade and I wanna play, let's say Terminator, right? 
Vic, I'm under C, how can I navigate to Terminator? All you gotta do is arrow key down. And again, like I said, I have left and right for that. So that's all you really need as far as the encoding on it. So I could go down, I could go to Time Crisis, TT, Terminator, I passed it, Terminator. So instead of me grabbing the gun and then pointing at Terminator, I'll go right and then I will long press enter. Give it like maybe a three second press and it'll boot. So again, I'm able to navigate without mouse and keyboard. I always suggest you do have your own mouse and keyboard for these systems, but you really don't need it. Once you get it narrowed down and set, you really don't need it. So again, I could escape out. The big thing I'm gonna be suggesting to Sean is just hit escape a couple of times. This is running programs like the Mule Shooter. Sometimes when you exit one time, it doesn't fully exit the Mule Shooter, so you might wanna just kinda of give that a couple of presses. So again, if I take my player one, I wanna play, let's say, I don't know, let's do, uh, let's do the Wii, for example. I'll go to Wii, I'll click on a game, um, before I was playing some uh, Resident Evil, long press, just give it one button, that's it. As you can see here, see that Demule Shooter? It is one thing that I'm mentioning to Joel. I think it's just the drive, or I can't tell if it's the PC, but as you can see, I do have a Demule Shooter error. Basically, that Demule Shooter is saying, hey, there's already Demule Shooter running. I'm gonna mention to, jo to Sean, if you see that, just do yourself a favor, exit out entirely, and then re-enter it. As you can see, it just happened, and I mentioned it to Joel too, I pressed escape a bunch of times and I still got a Demule Shooter error. I looked at his AHK files, it's nothing wrong with the AHK file. I'm gonna even do a full reboot, and every time I load up the House of the Dead 1, I always get that error. So, it's nothing major, it's not a, not a downside, it's just, if you see that error, you might as well just escape a bunch of times and exit out. As you can see right now, we're gonna play some Resident Evil. It's gonna take not long to load, but like the beginning stage is long. So I'm gonna definitely cut uh, and jump to the game. I'm gonna leave the volume up. I believe you might hear some stuttering. Again, I can't tell if it's because of the drive or I can't tell if the PC just can't handle it. Again, Della just clicked on it, so. Hey. Wii, not too much. So as you see, like with the Wii, not too much. The only real one I kind of noticed it, I'm gonna show you real quick. I was playing Time Crisis 2, um, and I'm gonna play it with the recoil off so you could hear it. Again, it might be emulation, because I'm gonna play Time Crisis 2. I even played Time Crisis 3. Um, you're just gonna hear some slowdown. It's not a deal breaker, it's not awful. And again, this could utilize the pedal. So I'm gonna bring the pedal back a little bit. You're gonna hear it after like the second wait. So you'll, you'll hear it. Right here. You can even see it. You can hear the action slow down. 
could hear it. You could just hear like the action. Like it's it's not that drastic. It's just I could hear it. I'm gonna run though. I'm gonna run Time Crisis Crisis Zone. Um, and to me, there's more stuff going on on the screen, and it plays it good. So again, I can't put my finger on it. Zone. It might be emulation. It's there's a couple of things. See, I think this game doesn't do it. see there's a to me there's a lot more action going on in that game but not much stuttering so again I, to me it's it's a it's a great great system me personally i'd probably just ask for another hard drive upgraded i mean meaning as uh western digital or a um seagate and the other thing maybe is just you could possibly upgrade the pc i mean to me in all honesty i'm not into dell optiplexes anymore um, I'm going to show you exactly what this specific cabinet is dealing with and what I've always dealt with with Dell Optiplexes, but you never know. Now, you know, you got, um, HP pavilions, you got, um, I even did the Dell XPS for the V-Pin, you know, there's more recent builds. Yes, they are more costly, but the generation of the hardware is newer. So again, honestly though, I'm still loving this cabinet. It's not a downside. It's not like, oh, I wait, no, this I'm, I'm now nitpicking and that's just me being nitpicky, but to me, it is a great, great system and, and I, I really can't boast about it much longer. Um, now in this part, I want to do is that I'm going to actually turn off the PC and I just want to show off basically how Sean is going to experience it and how you would as a customer if you did buy the cabinet from me. So again... I want everything as a one button press. Let me move the camera around so you, you know you could see a little bit better, I guess. All right, so I figure on this part now, I'm gonna show you like what the customer would do. Uh, one button boot, obviously, because it's a PC. So three, two, one, boom. So again, this is running a Dell Optiplex. You know how I like my, my setups. Um, one button boots. Again, I built this in a way that you don't need a keyboard or mouse handy. It's always good to have one connected and handy, but in all honesty, the way I want this build and all my builds, obviously, I just want it to be user friendly and easy to use. So again, you're gonna see that there is no keyboard and mouse needed. You're gonna see again, this has a, I believe it's like a 500 gig SSD that's in it. So it will boot fairly quickly. And then again, it's gonna launch into Joel's hard drive. So again, SSDs are fast and yeah, so Again, while that's going on, you can see I even have a nice little background to it. Please wait, because I do have LaunchBox and Joy Tiki set to launch on its own in the startup folder. So again, as far as the button layout, I am running a Dragon Rise uh, encoder. I do have player one, start coin, escape, up, down, enter, player two, coin, and start. So you're gonna see like when we get into LaunchBox, we wanna pick a game, in arcade alone, I think there's like 80 games. So instead of you kind of like having difficulty to search, I added the up and down. So you could basically click on one title and then go up and down. Secretly without labeling the buttons, 
I also have left and right here. So I'm gonna launch, for example, as you can see, Launchbox is launched, so I'm basically now able to enjoy. I'll go to NES, I have the recoil on, and I'll go to Duck Hunt, just to show you that it'll launch. So again, long press, maybe about two or three seconds, and let it do its thing. So again, um, when I was building this, uh, Joel's data is about 280 gigs big. And this guy, the Sean's hard drive only has about 240 gigs open. So I was short 40 gigs. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to put it to the SSD. But as you can see, not too bad on the load. I'll do some Duck Hunt, classic. I got so excited when I was able to play Duck Hunt because this is classic. And again, I have the recoil on. Again, you can always raise the volume on the under the deck. Just wanted to leave it kind of low so I could talk. Again, it is top notch. It is awesome. Definitely. I mean, duck hunt. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff. Now, if you want to escape, exit out. On um, he's got retro arc for NES, so you got to do it like two times. And like I said, me personally, I suggest just hitting escape a couple of times. Um, I'll show you real quick how like the up and down feature works. So I'll go to arcade and as you can see like I am going to be under B and I want to play, I don't know, let's, I want to play Terminator. So I'm going to click on one and I'll be able to navigate up and down with the arrow keys. And again, secretly left and right. I didn't want to put the, the input on the actual graphic because it was just, it wasn't going to look good. Uh, with the player one and that so for example if I wanted to launch Terminator a long press And let it do its thing again. This is right now on the external hard drive So again, not too bad on boot times. It's not drastic. It's not awful. I'll put some coins in So I'll play player one and then I'll also be able to put in player two So as you can see I can see the crosshair Terminator you could hold down and as you can see this is me holding down the trigger I personally don't like doing that. I feel like I'm gonna burn out the recoil on it So I'm just gonna turn the recoil off for now But essentially you could just hold down And now if I wanted to bring player two in Now you got player two so as you can see and again no calibration needed it is definitely an awesome feeling Again, I could, you can see I'm holding down the triggers. My only thing to show him was that I wish he did have the power supply. I'm pretty sure he's got a power supply hanging around. Again, he is a tech kind of guy like me, so I'm pretty sure he's got power supplies everywhere in his house. So again, as you can see, two player action, really one person just dual wielding these. It's, it's awesome, it is a thing of beauty. And again, escape out. I've been, I'm telling Sean, I'm telling everybody, just hit escape a couple of times. So games like, for example, House of the Dead, right? Sometimes I get this error. I'm going to see if I could actually get this error. I'm going to launch House of the Dead. And there it is. Good. Perfect. So I get a demure shooter error. And I mentioned it to Joel, but I also looked at his AHK files. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with the AHK file. If you do see an error like that, you're better off escaping and then re-entering. So as you can see real quick, like we just did Terminator Arcade. That's not using the mule shooter. And I went in depth and I can't tell if it's the driver, it's the PC, but it's it's nothing crazy. So far I launched two games, none of them use the mule shooter. And I don't have the mule shooter in the startup folder. So I noticed that that sometimes you do get an error that says the mule shooter, so you're better off just exiting completely, hitting escape a couple of times, and then re-entering. So this is House of the Dead. No off-screen reload on this, you have to actually use the button here. I personally like the crosshairs on the screen. It just, you know, it just gives me a sense of security. But as you can see, reload is this button here. And I'll bring in player two. Again, I have the volume low. I'll bump it up though. Again, for you to access the control panel, you do have to remove both guns. You lift up. While I'm here, I'll activate player two. So now I have to hold the guns like this. I gotta continue. <laughs> player one. Player two. 
Play a one and two. Ah. We got an good scene. Again, it's it's awesome stuff. It's definitely cool escape out. And then as you can see how I built the system, I have yet to use a keyboard and mouse. I'll do one more. Um, I'm not a fan of Big Buck Hunter, but I will launch Big Buck Hunter. A couple of guys in the Facebook groups, we've been modifying, not we, uh, I'm lucky that they uploaded it, but basically they did a new hack or a new mod to Big Buck Hunter that will remove the little shotgun that's in the bottom of the screen. So right now, again, I usually say press the button one time. As you can see, you do have a slight delay. That's anywhere you go. I always tell my customers just push it one time, push enter one time, hold down for a couple of seconds, but don't go and spaz out on enter or else you might just launch two or three programs. So this is good. I'm going to talk about Big Buck Hunter right now. Cause again, as you can see right now, you might be freaking out. Like what, what's happening? What's happening? I, again, I can't tell if it's the PC or if it's the hard drive. Um, I have this personally on my PC, but it's on an SSD. And when I launch Big Buck, it's, like in it, there's gonna be a big yellow logo with a wrench on it. And as you can see right now, we have nothing on the screen. So I'm just gonna be safe. I'm gonna just escape out and I'm gonna relaunch it. And usually when you do press enter, you could see the mouse wheel going. Again, press that, see that's what you're supposed to see. So again, not pointing any fingers, not blaming anybody, but as you can see, we just got a black screen. Some people might not know, but you have to exit. Now I also zip tied the cable here so it won't ever pull out. But basically, Big Buck Hunter is a one player game. Um, so you're not gonna, I believe you could do two player with like changing the gun, like handing off the gun. I Something about Big Buck I'm just not a fan of. I had my buddy Joshua over here and I, we were just playing it but I just wasn't a fan of it. But same thing, you can't use the pedal on this. You're just gonna basically use one of the two buttons to reload here, which is really a right click. So. Again, me and Josh were playing this specific game. We went into round two, and as you can see, this buck here just kept going for like a minute. And people of this day and age, they have no patience. So it's even now, like what's happening, why isn't it loading? So again, a lot of factors to just keep in mind. But again, nothing crazy, nothing too bad. You just gotta have a little bit of patience. Again, you'll see I'll show this off because again, somebody in the group, I believe Don, Don Lenny, um, uploaded this and basically you just have the crosshair. There is like usually a little like shotgun here that follows your mouse, but with this mod, he removed it. And again, what's so cool with any game, you could have the recoil on or off. And as you can see there, you had a little bit of a stutter. Oh crap, I shot a doe. That's why I'm like, ah, this game. <laughs> I'll do one more and I'll bump up the volume a little bit. Again, you can just see it. I'm the type of person I just want to show you everything so you could expect it. You did see a little bit of the stutter. Again, it's not drastic, but to some people it's like, ah, oh, oh, it's brutal. So I don't know, it depends on how you are. To me, it's not too bad. Honestly, me shooting that buck, it, it, that was a lag. That was a lag situation. So let's try it again, let's see. Yeah. So not too bad so far. So again, this gun, you, this game, you do need to reload after you shoot, just like how you really would on um, Big Buck. So, not bad. As you can see, no stutter on that. Now let's see if I can mimic what happened with me and Josh, where we were playing. And uh, basically I just had the deer running across the screen. <laughs> not bad, 62%. There's one, I think it's this one, that there's like a tiger or a cheetah that just comes out. Oh. Saw it a little bit there. Come on. Not bad. I mean, again, it's just me being nitpicky. It's not that big of a deal. 
But so far it's awesome. And again, as you can see, no keyboard needed. I'm able to go up and down. New game that was added to the group was Intake. This is a pretty intense game. I'm gonna have to leave the volume low because it's a music type of game. Um, so I don't wanna get hit with any copyright. You can see right now it goes into it. Uh, shout out to Brad D for the AHK file on this one. New game, basically again, you have to right click, you gotta shoot the pills at a certain color. Your crosshair has to be a right color. It's, it's a very, very cool game. So I'm gonna do a little bit of this and then I think that's honestly gonna be it for this video or else I'll be going on for an hour. <laughs> so you can see my crosshair, I'm changing the color. So I gotta shoot the blue when it's blue and then bring it off. Okay, good. Bring it to orange. Again, it is just endless amount of fun on it. What would I do differently? I would, again, just suggest name brand externals and again, you know my view on the Dell Optiplexes. You get what you pay for on a Dell Optiplex. Game over, dead on it. So, now you're done playing. What do you do? You literally come to the back here and one button press, the Dell shuts off and that is it. So I'll see you guys, Big VP, Game Case Arcades, Time Crisis, the dedicated shooter. All right, so now this part really is for Sean, for his boot up, and you could also watch this because of the Dell Optiplex situation. I can't figure it out. Hopefully, maybe Sean can figure it out. But basically, if I kill the entire switch, if I kill all the power off of the cabinet, this is the only time I experience it, something is up with the Dell Optiplex BIOS. So. I'm gonna put the, ca the power on, and a couple of things when we do the power on. I was gonna set the TV to um, uh, retail mode. It's not really worth it in this specific situation because um, the TV would boot up on its own. I'm gonna just put it on for now. And because right now the Dell, when you give it power, it boots, it's gonna turn on, but it doesn't fully turn on. Your TV will turn on and then it gives you the advertisement stuff because it now doesn't detect an input. So I just removed it or else you would have to turn on and off the screen anyway. So I just removed it. So now this again is just really for Sean and whoever has a Dell Optiplex to check it out. Again, looking at the rear of the cabinet, I do have a power button here. So I'm gonna press the power button one time. And again, this it, I, I can't figure it out. I can't figure out what's up, but basically, the Dell is gonna boot up and we're gonna get some type of error all the time. There's, 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 there's always an error. So now um, I might have to actually press it again, the power button, because again, I have the Dell power thing set to off. As you can see, nothing's happening. So I, I probably turned off the Dell. I'm gonna put it on. You could actually hear the fan kick on. And this, there you go. Okay, cool. So for Sean, you do have to do it twice. Again, I'm doing this on purpose. You're gonna see right now, I'm gonna get an error. No matter what, I, I get this error. No matter what, I either get this error, I get a time error, or like a no keyboard detected error. So just be ready with that, Sean. I've, I've, I changed the CMOS battery. I, I can't figure it out. But basically right now, it's saying to control alt delete. So if I all control delete, when I do that, you're just wanna, you're gonna wanna just spam F2. Spam F2 to get into the BIOS until you get this screen, okay? When you get this screen, you're gonna go down to boot sequence. And you can't use a mouse, so you're gonna press tab. You're gonna go down to UEIF, UEFI, I should say. Space will activate it. You're gonna tab, right, space, and then tab, exit, space. I, again, buddy, I, I've been at it for a week. I've changed CMOS batteries. I just can't figure it out. It's, it's a little bit of a nuisance. But once you get that, the system will boot. And now, though, the only thing to note for Sean is you could turn off the computer, but you might not want to kill the power, meaning the LEDs were on, but you know you do have the remote, so you could always turn off the LEDs. Um, but as you can see right now, again, we're booted. This is gonna boot up just like how I did it before. But once you remove the power, that's it. Your BIOS gets mixed up. And again, I did that battery thing and it just, it's, for some reason it's kicking my butt. But again, 
That's why I always suggest you do have a dedicated keyboard and mouse for the build. While that's going up, whoever's watching, you can take a look at the back here. So we got two doors. So top door, we bring down. As you can see, we have the IR wires. Raymond gives us a lot of wires, so that's awesome. And again, I do have the power going to the TV. We have our encoder there. Again, you can see the LED up top. I'm gonna to do a night mode video real quick. And bottom door, you see enough room for you to navigate. This PC is bolted down, so it's not gonna go anywhere. It's screwed down. You got your power supply and you got your subwoofer. Again, wires as clean and taut as possible. No need to worry, you can see the guns there. It's awesome. Again, clean power and the power button is here.